Many people believe that this is the most beautiful mathematical equation. But why do they say that? In the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can step by step derive this equation so that you can imagine what this equation is about and maybe you'll call it as beautiful at the end of this video. And in the second part of the video, hopefully when you have a kind of feeling about this equation, I'm going to show you why we consider it as a very beautiful equation. The first step you need to know is how to show a complex number on a 2D plane. This is the rectangular form which is written as A plus IB, in which A is the real part and IB is the imaginary part of our complex number. We can also use another notation to show this point, this complex point, on a 2D plane in the polar form. This distance from the origin to our complex number on the 2D plane is called R and the and this angle is called theta. As you can see, we have an x component and a y component, so we can say a is equal to r cosine theta and b is equal to r sine theta. And we can write this complex number in this form using r and theta. We can also write cosine theta plus i sine theta as e to the power of i theta, which is called the Euler's formula. To prove this amazing formula that connects exponential functions to trigonometric ones, we can write the series expansions of our exponential function. I want to write this expansion for the imaginary number i theta. As you can see, we can write the series expansion for e to the power of i theta and we have this expression. Look at each term in this expression. Here we have i, then we have i to the 2, i to the 3, i to the 4, and so on. We know that i to the 2 is minus 1, i to the 3 is minus i, i to the 4 is 1, i to the 5 is i, i to the 6 is again minus 1, and so on. So this term can be written as minus theta to the power of 2, this term can be written as minus i theta to the power of 3, then we have theta to the power of 4, and then i times theta to the power of 5. These are the real terms, and we can actually put them together and form this parenthesis. And these are the imaginary ones, so we can factor i and write this parenthesis. We know that this is the power series of cosine, and this is the power series of sine of theta. So we can write it as cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, and this is how we can connect trigonometric functions to exponential functions when z is a complex number. Now you might want to have a kind of geometrical look at e to the power of i theta and see what happens. So let's take theta to be pi. The first term is 1. We can show this by going to the right by one unit on our complex plane along the x or the real axis. The next term which is i pi is an imaginary number and as you can see I have gone up by the amount of pi and the next point at the second step is here. The third term of this expansion is minus p to the power of 2 divided by 2 factorial and it actually gets us here. The next term has a minus i theta direction, so we go to this point, and then we add another real number, and as you can see, the vectors are becoming smaller and smaller. And then we add another positive imaginary number, and we are here. And then another negative real number, a negative imaginary number, a positive real number, and finally, a positive imaginary number. If you take a closer look at this part, you can see we are reaching minus 1. This point is exactly point minus point 0.976 plus point zero zero six nine i and it's almost a very good estimation of minus 1. So we can write a complex number either in the rectangular form or the polar form. And the amazing part here is that the trigonometric functions are somehow related to the exponential functions. Now let's take a look at an example. I want to write this rectangular form complex number 
in this polar form. So I need to find r and find theta. If I multiply our complex number with another version of itself in which i is changed to minus i and it's called the complex conjugate, we get a real number. In this form, z star or z bar are used for actually writing complex conjugates. So this is our complex conjugate. So if we multiply z with its complex conjugate, we can find r squared. And as you can see, r squared is 4 plus 12 root and it is 4. So we expect to find our point, our complex point on this circle. We know that the real part is 2, so this is our complex number. So this should be our imaginary component. And also the magnitude is this, which is 4. And what we need to do now is to find theta. To find theta, we can use this triangle. We have a right triangle and we have the lengths of all the sides. So we can use any trigonometric functions we want. I use sine of theta and it is square root of 3 over 2 and we find theta to be pi over 3 or 60 degrees plus 2 n pi n can be any integer the reason is that if i rotate by 2 pi i get to the same point and even if i actually rotate by minus 2 pi i have the same point and that's why i wrote 2 n pi so this is z and this is its conjugate. So let's review what we have learned. This is how we show a complex number. This is the real part and this is the imaginary part. And we can also write it in the polar form in which R is the modulus of Z or the magnitude of our complex number. And we can use the complex conjugate to find it. Complex conjugate can be written like R times e to the power of minus i theta or a minus ib and as you can see r and a and b are related like this and finally this is the relation between theta and our real and imaginary parts so let's find e to the power of i pi on this plane this is our general polar formula so r is 1 and we expect to find our points on this circle our angle is pi so this is our complex number on the plane so you can see that e to the power of pi is minus 1. Pay attention that this point also represents some other angles. And now this is the equation we talked about in the beginning of the video, which is called the Euler's identity. So now let's get to the second part of our video and see why this equation is considered as the most beautiful mathematical equation by a lot of people. Actually, I see this equation as a celebration of math. Look at the components we have here. We have 1. This is the most ancient number we know. The next thing we have is 0, the number that defines nothingness. And you know that e to the power of ip is minus 1, so we have minus 1 here, the mirror of magnitude. We also have pi, which is the circle constant. We also have e, which is the base of natural growth. And we have i, which represents complex numbers and it's the doorway to the complex plane. Every component in this formula represents a part of mathematics. We have algebra, we have number theory, geometry, trigonometry, calculus, complex numbers, complex analysis, and we can see them together in a compact form in a single equation. There's a lot of history behind each of these components and each of these fields in mathematics. And they're somehow gathered together. And it's like a celebration of math. And I say also the celebration of people who did this. I personally find this equation as beautiful because when I look at it, I can see a lot of people gathered together, the efforts of a lot of people gathered together in one simple equation. And that's why I say, this equation is a celebration of mathematics and also the human beings who tried hard over thousands of years to come up with these amazing ideas. So if you want to know more about the history of numbers, I suggest you to watch this video.